In this video, we're going to learn how to read and store the numbers in a file into a 2D array using C. So here I have a file with eight lines in it, and each line has four numbers in it. So to store these numbers into a 2D array, we'll need a 2D array with eight rows and four columns. We'll create preprocessor constants for these number of rows and columns. We'll have here number define rows eight and number define columns four. Now we can use these preprocessor constants to declare and work with the 2D array. We'll declare the 2D array using type float because these numbers have decimal places. Here we'll have float array rows and columns to declare the 2D array with eight rows and four columns. Now in this solution here, we're going to say that we know the file contains a certain number of rows and columns. There are other techniques we could use if we have a file with an unknown number of rows or an unknown number of columns. I'll cover those techniques in future videos. Next, we'll declare a file pointer variable to help us open the file and read the contents of the file. We'll have here file star file to declare the file pointer variable. Next, we'll use fopen to open the file. We'll have here file is equal to fopen file.txt and then r. So this call to fopen will attempt to open the file with the name file.txt. This second argument, the string r, is going to have fopen open the file in reading mode so we can read the content of the file. If fopen fails, it's going to return null. We'll check for that. Here we'll have if file is equal to null, that means fopen return null and it was assigned to file. In that case, we're going to exit with an error message and status. We'll have here printf error opening file backslash n for a new line and then return one. Returning one instead of returning zero is a signal to the shell here, to the terminal that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Now, if we get to this point here, that means the file was opened successfully and file is now a file pointer that will allow us to access the file. So we want to store each line of four numbers into each row of our 2D array. So this line here should be stored in the first row of the 2D array. And this line here should be stored in the next second row of our 2D array and so on. So what we'll do is declare a variable int row and we'll initialize it to zero. And row is going to keep track of the row where we're currently storing numbers into our 2D array. So next we'll create a loop to read each line in the file and store it into a row of our 2D array. Here we'll have while not feof file. So the feof function is going to return true once we reach the end of the file. Otherwise, it's going to return false. So, so long as it's not true that we've reached the end of the file, we're going to continue this loop. The first thing we'll do in the loop is check to see if there's been an error accessing the file. We'll have here if f error file. Then again, we're going to exit with an error message and status. We'll have here printf error reading file backslash n for a new line, and again, return one. So it's pretty unlikely that there's going to be an error when reading from the file, but we can use f error to check for that. So f error is going to return true if there's been an error. And in that case, we're going to exit with an error message and status. So next we'll create a loop to read in each individual number in a row. And we're going to store that number into the right column index of our 2D array for the current row. So here we'll have four int i is equal to zero, then i is less than columns, and i plus plus. So here we're having a counter variable i go from zero up until the number of columns in our 2D array and in the file. Then here we'll use fscanf to read in the next float value. We'll have here fscanf file and then percent f followed by and array row and i for the indexes. So fscanf is going to read from the file the next float value. 
and it's going to store it in the array at the row index row and the column index i. This and operator here is going to pass in the memory address of this element in the array. That's going to allow fscanf to actually set that element to this float value here. So when reading in the next float value, fscanf is going to skip over any white space characters. So in other words, any spaces in between the numbers on a row or the new line characters in between the rows themselves. And that's just something fscanf does automatically. That's just how it works. Now, if our file contains some trailing white space characters, like for example, some trailing new line characters, then this call to feof here will not recognize the end of the file because there's technically more content in the file, but fscanf will fail to read in another number because there is no number left to read in. In that case, fscanf is going to return eof. So we'll check for that. And if fscanf does return eof, in that case, we're going to break to stop the execution of this loop because we know at that point that we've reached the end of the file. So after this loop reads in the next four numbers and stores them into the current row, then for the next iteration of this outer loop here, we're going to increment the current row. Here we'll have row plus plus. Now our 2D array can only store eight rows. So we'll check to see if we've reached the maximum capacity of our 2D array. And in that case, we're again going to use break, this time to stop the outer loop. So here we'll have if row is equal to rows, break. Because at that point, we've reached the maximum capacity of our 2D array, and there's no point to reading in more data. But now, with each loop iteration of this outer loop, we're going to be incrementing row by one. That means this inner loop here is going to store the four numbers that it reads in into the next row of our 2D array. So now we're done accessing the file. We can now close the file. Here we'll have F close and then file to close our access to the file. To make sure we've read in the data correctly, we should output the contents of the 2D array. We'll use an outer loop to go through each row index and an inner loop to go through each column index. Here we'll have for int i is equal to zero, i is less than rows, and i plus plus. So here, we're going to have our counter variable i go from zero up until the number of rows in our 2D array. Then here we'll have an inner loop with for int j is equal to zero, j is less than columns, j plus plus. So here in our inner loop, we're having the counter variable j go from zero up until the number of columns in our 2D array. Then here in the inner loop here, we're going to output the element at this row and column index combination. We'll have here percent dot one f to output a float value with a single decimal digit of precision and then space to put a space in between the numbers on a row. Then we'll have output the element in the array at the row index i and the column index j. So here for each row, we're going to output the elements at each column. The inner loop is going to output the elements at each column. After we've done that, we're going to output a new line. So that way the next row of values outputs on the next line. So this here should do it. We can save our program and compile it and test it out. Over here, we'll compile our program. Then here, we'll run it. And we can see we get the file contents, but this time we're outputting them from our 2D array because we've successfully read and stored the values in the file into our 2D array using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.